Here we are asked to evaluate the integral of this expression right here. And if we look carefully, we will notice that we have the product of two functions. In other words, we have one function being multiplied by another function. And that's a good indication that the technique you might want to try is integration by parts. And we've included the integration by parts formula in this purple box. And in order to use that formula properly, what we need to do is fill in this following template here. And the most important thing to get started here is to select the appropriate u. And your u is always going to be one of your two functions. The trick is to pick the correct one. Now, a good rule of thumb is that you should always let u equal the function whose derivative becomes a simpler function. For example, if we let u equal x squared plus 10x, and then we compute the derivative, we would have 2x plus 10 as our derivative. Now that does become a simpler function. We go from a quadratic polynomial down to a linear polynomial, and that is indeed a simpler function that we have created there. On the other hand, if we let u equal the cosine of x, and then we compute that derivative, well, then we get negative sine of x. So we go from one trigonometric function to another trigonometric function that isn't obviously any simpler than the original function. So this would probably not be the best choice for u. And therefore, we will go ahead and let u equal x squared plus 10x. Now, when you go from u to du, again, you're going to want to do a derivative. We've already computed that derivative. It was 2x plus 10 and then dx. As for v, that will simply be the rest of the expression that is left behind, if you will, inside of the integral. So in this case, we're going to let dv equal the cosine of x dx. Now to go from dv to v requires integration rather than a derivative. And the integral of cosine of x is of course sine of x. So once you fill in the template, you then want to move over to the formula that we've put into the purple box here. If we follow that formula, we would have the integral of u, which recall was the x squared plus 10x, multiplied by dv, which was, according to our chart, the cosine of x dx. And this will equal the following. By the way, notice this expression is simply the original problem. On the right-hand side, we have u, which again was x squared plus 10x, being multiplied by v. We determined v to be the sine of x. And then we're going to subtract another integral of v again, so you put the sine x right here, multiplied by your dx, and, excuse me, multiplied by your du. And in this case, the du was 2x plus 10 dx. And if we look carefully, we can see that now we have another integral which we need to compute. And unfortunately, this integral right here is essentially just as challenging as the one we started with. So oftentimes in integration by parts questions, you get stuck at a point here where your integral is as complicated as the one you started with. So it's almost like you're not making any progress. However, what we need to do is a second round of integration by parts, and we will see that that will lead us to success. So we're integrating by parts within a broader integration by parts problem. And so let's see if we can follow this along. We're going to have to set up a new little template, and it might help us maybe here to pull this integral off to the side. So we're going to take an aside, we're going to evaluate it, and then we're going to come back to the main problem that we were writing down. So to evaluate this integral, again, will require integration by parts. So following our rule that we should let u equal the function whose derivative becomes simpler, we shall let u equal 2x plus 10 because the derivative just becomes 2. And that is indeed a simpler function. Therefore, the v, or excuse me, the dv will equal the other expression. So the sine of x dx. Remember to go from dv to v, you have to integrate. The integral of sine of x is negative cosine of x. Okay, so now in order to integrate this, we follow the integration by parts formula. Remember it was the integral, excuse me. Remember the formula was uv minus the integral of v du. 
So here we go, we have u, which was 2x plus 10, multiplied by v, which was negative cosine of x. I'm going to put the negative in front here, just because it looks a little tidier, minus the integral of v again, so negative cosine of x, and then times your du, which was the 2dx. Why don't we factor out the 2 to the outside as well as this negative sign? Now, because there's already a negative sign there, we're going to end up with a positive. So you'll have a positive 2 integral of cosine of x dx. And then over here, we still have the same stuff. We've got the negative 2x plus 10 cosine of x. Now we just have to integrate cosine of x, and the integral of cos x is sine x. So we end up with plus 2 sine of x. Now remember, this expression right here was the integral that we were trying to evaluate all the way back at the top. It was this one right here. So for our final answer, we're going to have x squared plus 10x multiplied by our sine of x, and then minus that integral that we just figured out, and that was negative 2x plus 10 cosine of x, and then it was plus 2 sine of x. Let's see if we can squeeze this in here. Plus 2 sine of x, like so. And then really the only other way to simplify it is to take this minus sign on the outside of our bracket and distribute it inward. So putting it all together, finally, we're going to have x squared plus 10x times the sine of x. Notice here you're going to have a minus and a minus, so that's going to become plus 2x plus 10 times the cosine of x. And then when you distribute the minus sign over to this plus sign right here, we end up with a minus 2 sine of x. And then we add the constant of integration, so plus c. This right here will be the final answer to the question.